Hi everyone. In today's video, we will talk about computational graphs. Computational graphs are used for performing a basic calculus step, which we do a lot in neural networks, which is calculating the gradient of a function. Ideally, this graph is used for evaluating complex mathematical expressions. We will start with a rather simple example of a mathematical function, tan hyperbolic x, and then apply computational graph on top of it. We will then validate the results with the actual computations. We should know that in computational graph, the nodes represent the mathematical operations and the edges represents the flow of data between those mathematical operations. We will now expand the term tan hyperbolic x, which will look like this. Now, if we see this expression carefully, and if we start with the fact that we just know x, we can see that this expression is entirely made of x minus x e raised to x e raised to minus x. And once we are able to determine all these values, then exactly we can find e raised to x minus e raised to minus x for the numerator and e raised to x plus e raised to minus x for the denominator. So now the computational graph uh, representation will become much easy and we will be able to represent the computational graph which will look like this. So at each node we explain that there is going to be a mathematical computation or a mathematical operation present. At this node we uh, do the mathematical operation of multiplying x with plus 1. So over here we have just x stored. Um, and over here in this node we multiply x with minus 1. So over here we have minus x stored. We further calculate the value exponential x over here which is e raised to x. And over here we get e raised to minus x. And here we calculate e raised to x minus of e raised to minus x, which becomes the numerator for the exp expression of tan hyperbolic x. And over here we just calculate e raised to x plus e raised to minus x. We reciprocate it um, in the form that we have 1 upon e raised to x plus e raised to minus x. And eventually we multiply this term and this term so on doing so at this step we exactly get the expression of tan hyperbolic x so this is how we were able to resolve an expression of tan hyperbolic x which looks like this in the form of a computational graph just we need to keep in mind that the nodes should represent the mathematical operations which we are performing and the edges represent the flow of data between those mathematical operations. We also know over here that the derivative of f dash x is this 1 minus tan hyperbolic x square. We will label the nodes as a, b, c till h and write what exactly is happening inside each node. So here we label this first operation as a, uh, the second operation as b. C, D, E, F, G and eventually the final operation as H. Now we will try to understand what are the substitutions we are making at each node. We start with A. At node A we just multiply x with 1. At B we multiply x with minus 1. And considering the fact that all the edges represent the flow of information from one node to another, just consider the node A over here and the node C over here. So we have an information that A is equal to X and it is the duty of this edge to relay the information from A to C and consequently C could be written as E raised to A. Even though at the point C we have calculated previously that it is E raised to X but since X is taken over by A as we substituted X with A so we can safely say that C is e raised to A. Likewise, at this point D, we can say that D is e raised to B. Now, uh, since we have the information at C and D, and we need to find out what information we can have at E, we can get that E is C minus D, and the operation at F is C plus D. Consequently, at G, 
we get 1 upon f and eventually at h we multiply both e and g together so over here what exactly is happening is the fact that at each node we have the information propagated from the previous node and that information propagated at a single node is cumulatively taken forward to the nodes which are succeeding it we will now draw something which is called as a dependency graph even though dependency graph is not a term used in literature i will call it as a dependency graph to make understanding a bit simple it should be noted that this dependency graph has nothing to do with the dependency graph we learn in nlp and uh, other places uh, it's just a term used for understanding this example here we start with the last node um, we start with h and draw the predecessors of each node till the origin node so if this is the graph we are having our dependency graph is going to look like this we have h h is dependent on two nodes e and g we plot it out it is dependent on g and it is also dependent on e and if i consider g g is dependent completely on f it is not having any other predecessors and now we have e and f both are dependent on c and d f is dependent on c and f is also dependent on d and if we consider e e is also dependent on d and e is also dependent on c now d is uh, dependent only on b and c over here is dependent only on a and now if i consider b it is dependent on x now whenever i reach a variable i terminate over here and likewise a is also dependent on x now since our actual problem involved computation of f dash x or in other terms del h by del x we will do that computation in the following way we will start with h first and write the entire path which we could propagate till we reach till x write all possible paths which could be followed while traveling from h from the beginning uh, while reaching to x at the terminal low so let me write one such path it is h g f d b x likewise i can also write h g f c a x i can write h e d b x and h e c a x now this is how one of the derivative is going to look like i take a path like this h e c a i rep, uh, replace or i place del over here before each term and then substitute forward term over here so uh, the term which follows del e is del c i substitute over here the term which follows del c is del a i substitute over here since del a is not having any predecessors i substitute with del x so i do it for all the paths which we have found till now and then add all of them if we do that we get a term which looks like this now uh, this first term was a term obtained from h e c a this term was obtained from h e d b uh likewise this term was this particular term was obtained from h g f c a and uh, the last term was obtained from h g f d b and these were the four paths which we have obtained uh in the previous step like h g f d b we obtained h g f c a we obtained h e c a and h e d b all the paths were obtained 
and just uh, considering the example of HECA, I was able to write uh, the single derivative uh, obtained from the path HECA. So that was uh, put over here. Now we had HEDB. Uh, the derivative was calculated in exact same way that we write HEDB first and then replace uh, or we just add del over here and in the denominator we just populate the successive term which follows uh, like del e is following del h i write over here now del d is following del e i write del d over here and del b is following del d i write del b over here and at the end i write del x like uh, after del b there is no other term i write del x so now since we have uh, Form the chain rule. This is exactly how we would be calculating the chain rule in calculus. So we needed to calculate the del h by del x. We were able to decompose it in the form of chain rule. We will just replace it with the variables from the substitutions we made. Now the first term which we need to find out is over here. Let's consider uh, this term. Uh, we need to find out del h divided by del e. Now we will take a look into the substitutions we have made till now. For convenience sake, I have put all the substitutions which have done, which we have done previously over here uh, towards the right. So we first need to calculate del h by del e. We go to h and we try to differentiate with respect to e. We get the term g. We write it over here. Now we have to calculate del e divided by del c. Del e by del c. So this is the expression for e. And if we do del E by del C, we are just going to get 1. Now we calculate del C by del A. Del C by del A is going to give me E raised to A. And eventually del A by del X, this is 1. Likewise, we have to compute del H by del E. We have the value of H over here. We will, uh, if we differentiate with respect to E, we get G again. We do del E by del D, which is minus 1, uh, which is taken over here. We have to calculate del D by del B, uh, which is E raised to B as mentioned, and del B by del X is minus 1. We do it for all the other uh, terms which are there, like we do it for this term as well, and we do it for this term, and eventually on solving, we get the expression which looks like this. Now, we usually will stop here only because we already have got the derivative of uh, H with respect to X. But since we need to validate the fact that this actually matches with the theoretical derivative of uh, tan hyperbolic x, we will do a number of substitutions from here on and try to see whether we are actually getting our result comparable with the one um, which we have on uh, differentiating tan hyperbolic x with respect to x. So we make a substitution over here. G is equal to 1 by F as taken from here. And we replace uh, the G term over here with 1 by F. We solve further and we make substitutions uh, with respect to F and E. We are just propagating with all the substitutions we have made in this uh, table. And on uh, doing further substitutions and uh, down the lane we substitute the value of C and D as well. This is exactly the value which we are getting till now. We can further substitute the value of f as c plus d. Now this will be substituted as a c plus d and the value of c is e raised to a which is e raised to x plus um, the value of d is e raised to b which is e raised to minus x and since there is a square term this is exactly what we are getting as a final result. So what we conclude is the fact that del h by del x is uh, this. Now if I actually calculate the derivative of uh, like if I actually have to compute del x by del by del x tan hyperbolic x it is a term which is this 1 minus tan hyperbolic x square. Now if I just expand it uh, we are getting 4 times e raised to x plus e raised to minus x whole square, which is exactly what we are getting as del h by del x. Let's now summarize what all we have done till now.
we start with the function fx which we want to find the derivative of we write the expression of fx um, which we have written in the form of e raised to x minus e raised to minus x by e raised to x plus e raised to minus x uh, using the fact that all the mathematical operations are supposed to be present at nodes and the edges are supposed to present the flow of information from one operation to other we draw a computational graph over here which looks like this and then what we do is we label each of the nodes in a computational graph with a letter letter um, and at the next step we mention what exactly is happening corresponding to a letter like if i consider the letter a um, we are just multiplying it with x so we can say that a is x b is minus x c is e raised to a this is the c which we add uh, d is e raised to b and so on and all this is considered using the property of the computational graph that the flow of information flows from one node to another via h now once we have made all these substitutions we proceed forward with creating something called as a dependency graph um, which is shown over here at the right hand side the dependency graph will show all possible paths which could be uh, made uh, if we consider the terminal node h over here to the root node x from where we started and once we were able to find out all the paths there were actually four paths over here uh, we proceed forward with the calculation of the chain derivatives uh, and because of making the calculation of this chain derivatives easy we did draw this computational graph in the first place once we are able to draw uh, the computational graph we were able to draw the dependency graph and then we were able to find out the chain derivatives um, we proceed with uh, the substitution values which we have made till now and we made successive uh, substitutions using the values which we have to obtain an expression so in theoretical terms uh, our calculation would be well off done over here at this step but since we had to prove that uh, the derivative of tan hyperbolic x is uh, correct uh, or we wanted to validate that the computational graph is giving the correct result as compared to the ones in real world we proceeded forward to use all the substitutions step by step and at the end we got uh, the value of derivative as this now we uh, knew that um, the actual value of derivative of tan hyperbolic x is this so we did the substitutions um, of tan hyperbolic x with its expression value and we uh, did uh, the calculations a bit and then we realized that we are getting the exact same value as we got a step before so we were able to validate the fact that the derivative of tan hyperbolic x could be calculated using computational graph as well. So in this video we were able to understand how we are able to find the derivative using a computational graph. Even though we selected a very simple function for our understanding purpose, we will now take an example of a neural network and see how the backpropagation works over there with computational graph in the next video. Thanks for your time.